Spyro the Dragon is an original PlayStation game released in 1998, and to this day has a pretty active speedrunning community. Speedrun.com has documented any percent runs of Spyro starting from May 2011, and since then, the run has been cut from 57 minutes to 37 minutes and 55 seconds. But it took way too long for the current world record holder, Lumilora, to beat the former. Spyro is a pretty simple game. Run around, collect the dragons and the gems, bam, you win. It should come down to simply routing and efficient movement. But there's one massive obstacle that gate kept the record for over two years, a rat. Today, I will be telling you about how Laura runs Spyro any percent and how that rat caused a simple run to take years for her to beat. But we'll get to that later. For now, I want to give a bit more context on what the any percent run of Spyro actually entails. For those not familiar, Spyro is basically a collectathon platformer similar to other games like Banjo-Kazooie, Ratchet and & Clank, and the 3D Mario games. The main goal is to go through the six home worlds, freeing all the dragons from Nasty Nork, collecting gems, subscribe buttons, and dragon eggs along the way, which allow you to progress in the game. This allows a lot of the routing of the game to vary quite a bit, and explaining how each record changed the routing would be a lot. So today, I'm gonna focus on the current record set by Laura. The first homeworld is the Artisans, and in order to leave the world, Laura needs 215 gems and 10 dragons if she wants to keep pace for the 6,000 gems and 50 dragons she needs by the end. Most of this is just good routing, but there are a few interesting jumps that she uses to break the normal route of the game, one in Stone Hill and one in Town Square. These are both easy enough jumps to hit, but if they do fail, they're run killers. After those, though, is a really interesting movement tech. This is called a wall glide. By staying parallel with a slanted wall whilst gliding, you can kind of surf on the wall. This is used here with some well-timed jumps to ride the side of this cliff, eventually clipping through. This allows Laura to get the last dragon in the first home world, letting her move on to the second, the Peacekeepers. In this world, the pace of the run really starts to rev up. In order to pass it, Laura needs around 1,200 gems, one dragon egg, and 26 dragons. And to get these as fast as possible, a few new tricks are introduced. First of all, a charge glide jump. Charge gliding is used for most of the glides in the game, and involves hitting the charge button a frame before gliding, and allows the glides to go much, much further while also keeping more height. Here, this is used to jump over this gap, which is normally much too big to cross with a jump, saving about 12 seconds. The second trick introduced in this section is called a proxy. A proxy is a general term for this era of video games in which you are shoved into level geometry in a weird way, causing the game to give you a lot of vertical movement. Here, Mama Proxy is used to sequence break to the end of the level, saving again about 12 seconds on the run. Now, here's where I kind of want to deviate from just following the route of the run, because the next few worlds are just kind of continuing the collectathon using variations of proxies and having the best movement to get through as quickly as possible. But I think the most interesting part of this run comes at the end. The last world before the end is Dreamweavers, a very simple world. It's mostly about getting the remaining gems to be able to move on to the end, and there's not much to say about it. A good pace for exiting this world is around 36 minutes. And if you remember, there's only about two minutes left in the run. But how is Laura going to complete the entire final world in that time? Well, this is where our good friend Dorito the Rat comes in. This glitch called Rat Proxy is what makes or breaks the run. If it fails, her chance at a world record is over, and it fails a lot. Laura once did 2,000 attempts of just this glitch in a row and only completed 47. That leaves us with a 97.65% chance of failing. But why does it fail so much? That's because Rat Proxy requires the rat to move in such a precise way that you can jump into a corner and get squished between the rat and said corner and fly up in the air, landing on the portal and gliding into the nasty Nork head. You can't AI manipulate this like other glitches in the run, so it's fully up to chance. And since it's right at the end of the run, that means that countless world record paces have been killed by this single glitch. And that's why it took Laura over two years to get this world record. But on March 13th, 2023, she finally did it beating the former record by two seconds with a time of 37 minutes and 55 seconds. However, I've been a little dishonest. Laura's 37.55 isn't actually the current record. 
The day I reached out to her and started to write the script, someone sniped it. Ash Riel is another Spyro runner that was running alongside Laura, also losing over 50 record paces to Rat Proxy. But this time, they were able to get a 37-46, saving 9 seconds off Laura's run due to their incredibly consistent movement. This 9 second improvement was a lot considering how quickly it came after such a lull in the community, and it seemed like in order to compete, Laura had a lot more grinding to do. A week after Ash's run, Laura went live for some casual runs, just to hang out with her community and try to shake off some rust, since she hadn't run any percent much in previous weeks. Pretty soon, she found herself with a decent pace, nothing insane. Not really world record pace, but good enough to keep the run. Once she got to Nasty's world, she had two options. One, the most likely option, was to attempt Rat Proxy, maybe get it and she would get a decent time on the run, but not a record. But her second option was a bit more interesting. If you remember, Rat Proxy has you land on the portal before gliding into the Nork head. This is because any sudden movements can cancel out the proxy so runners play it safe, letting the natural movement take them onto the portal since the rat proxy itself is so rare to hit. However, technically, runners can do a turnaround rat proxy, which involves pre-moving towards the head as you make the jump for the proxy. No one's ever done it in a run before. It's too risky for a world record pace. But Laura's run wasn't that. She wasn't expecting anything crazy, so why not try something fun? But she'd never expect she'd actually hit it. Hitting the turnaround rat proxy saved just enough time to turn this run into a world record pace. And since all the crazy tricks were out of the way, all she had to do was finish out the run. And once she beat Nasty Nork, she clocked a time of 37 minutes and 45 seconds. A one second time shave from Ash's record a week before. But Ash wasn't ready to give up yet. So two weeks later, they shaved off another second. And then, on May 13th, 2023, Laura came back with her final world record run of Spyro Any%. Percent. She played absolutely perfectly and got a run that she thought would forever be a dream. She was able to shave an additional 17 seconds off of the previous record. And at this level of perfection of the game, it'll take a lot to beat this one. But with the pace of the records these last two months, who knows where it'll be tomorrow. But for now at least, it seems like Dorito the Rat is finally on Laura's side.